Hello, I'm Randy Purcell. I'm going to show you a little bit about my wax ink transfer on wax process. Here are my tools. A uh, few things have changed since I last showed a video of my work, and those wood blocks are probably the main change. You also use a lot of X Acto blades. Here's my workspace and my container of papers that I use to get the ink from. Uh, the panel I'll be working on here for a little bit. In this uh, section here I'm showing myself sketching out the composition on some brown paper. I, I generally uh, I sketch out my composition just to uh, give me a general idea of the size and the layout of the composition. I also did a pretty detailed smaller version drawing of this composition to keep everything kind of true and know kind of what the outcome is going to be. I don't always go through that much trouble. Um, sometimes it's more fun to freehand things, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. I, I do have a guide drawn out on that paper, but it's more or less just to give me a, an idea of where to put things, um, the size of the objects. You know, in this case, it's the palm leaves, branches. Um, cutting those out and kind of getting an idea where I'm going to put them. After I get so far along, I'll start embedding these pieces of paper into the wax. Notice I have the ink side down, the, the green color for the palm leaves is, is face down and I'm taking this wood block and I'm just kind of rubbing it into the wax. It pushes it down in there, just embeds it just a little bit. Um, that way the, the ink can kind of set into the wax. And here's another composition, different color background I thought I'd throw in there. And uh, this one's coming along a little bit further, more detail coming in. And it's, it's easier once you get more paper laid down, depending on the composition of course, the more of the wax that's covered, the easier it is to rub it in, and which will make it easier to sand later. That's where the, I don't know if it's more tedious doing the cutting out of the objects or the, the sanding. Both of them are pretty monotonous. It's very time consuming, but in the end it, it's a really unique process. Um, I like the textures and the kind of the the way the the colors and the imagery doesn't really come through really clear and exact. I, I kind of like that. It's not exact. A lot less pressure on me as an artist. And here I've I've been working on the sailboat. I, I did another drawing for the sailboat um, so I could get a little more detail. And here's what it looks like with just the paper down on top of the wax. Uh, this is before I start sanding. Now I have my sandpaper. I'm going to take the sandpaper and I'm not really sanding the paper away. I'm just more or less roughing it, roughening it up so when I put water on it, it'll absorb it and it'll be easier to, to rub away from the ink that's laid down on top of the wax. Uh, I haven't tried it without sanding, but paper just won't absorb when it's slick. You know, magazine pages are kind of slick. And I'm using magazine pages from uh, magazines like Architectural Digest, Veranda. Any of them pretty much will work. You get very dirty doing this. Nice. So, but I like the, the colors that I can find in Architectural Digest. And some ads, you can almost look at the colors and after a while of playing with this, I've figured out which ones work best if I get the most vibrant colors. Now that I've sanded away all the, or at least roughed up the edge of the paper, I'm going to wet it all down. And uh, while it's wet, I'm taking this t-shirt rag and I'm just kind of spreading the water on top of it. I'm not putting too much pressure on it because I don't want to peel away the, the ink on top of the wax. I just want to make sure the water is getting into all areas of the, of the paper. So when I do start rubbing with my finger, I'm, I'm pulling away just the paper and the ink is staying on top of the wax. And you'll see here, I, I start rubbing with my finger, and then you start seeing the color come through. And then you just kind of polish it in between. T-shirt works great. The more I rub it, and the longer it's set into the wax, the harder I can rub. Once I know that the ink's there and the paper's gone, I can rub pretty hard. It's just got to be careful. You don't want to scratch it away because it could, if you don't have a little bit of moisture on that t-shirt, it could scratch away the ink. You can see how vibrant the, the green looks now that all the paper's gone. Now I've gone in with this wire scraper tool that I've 
somebody who works with clay might use. When I'm scraping away the dirty wax where I've sanded, the way the ink, that paper and the ink residue is gotten on top of that wax, the only way to get it off is to scrape it a little at a time. Another time consuming product or process, part of this process. Um, but once that dirty wax is, it just makes the color stand out that much more with, you know, that yellow background, especially on this one. On the other one, it's a, it's a blue background, so it doesn't pop. It's not quite as vibrant of a, a contrast. But none, nonetheless, it still makes the, the imagery come out a little bit brighter. Uh, I've been playing with background colors. Started using the, a lot of this blue right here and eventually started playing with the yellow. I'm using a milk paint as a background on most of my compositions. On others I've used different ones, but here's a, the final piece of the sailboat, the beach scene, and the proudest pig iron. This is one of it in uh, New York's Brooklyn Bridge. And I've painted on actual wood that had milk paint on it, sanded away. This is a boot. And another kind of a whitish blue background of a old banana seat bicycle. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.